What up, everybody? This is Chris Rosco. This is Operation Moksha, and today we're talking about dating apps. And I'm essentially going to be talking about dating in general, but I'm going to use dating apps as kind of a reference for like some things that have worked for me and some things that haven't. You know, because I'm 32 years old, I've more or less um, satisfied all my sexual desires. I've still got a few left, thank God, that I'm still still working on. Um, but I've also had multiple long-term relationships, two that lasted about five years and one that lasted two. Um, and, and I've dated intermittently. And so I've, I've, I've had a decent enough ex time experiencing this sort of stuff. And so I feel like I have something to say. I'm not an expert. I'm not a dating coach or anything like that, but, um, I've lived a full life and I've had a lot of experiences. So take this for what you will. I personally like dating apps. I think they're cool. Um, but there's also a high propensity for them to be unsatisfying. And I'll tell you why. So first of all, the reason that I think they're cool is because it's a social experiment and I like experiments. I like seeing like what happens when I put certain energy out and I like attuning myself to the energy of the people that I really want to be spending my time with. And I like playing social games and having social experiments where it's like I get into the, the field of resonance of what it would be like to, to be to have a match, right? Where it's like how like if this person was completely right for me and my vibe, how would I talk to them? And I get into that and I see if the person feeds into it or not. And that's generally how I tell if I want to take the thing to the next level or not. They either meet me where I want to be met or they don't, or they just ghost or whatever. And so in that sense, it's really, it's a really fun way to, to hone your, um, your, your frequency and your resonance and the way that you want to approach things and the way you want to deal with rejection and stuff like that. It's a great social, um, experiment piece for that. But it also comes with some potential downsides. Uh, the two most that are in line with with what I'm thinking right now are um, one being that a lot of times we can be really bad at guessing what we want. You know, it's like we think that we want, that we're attracted to a specific aesthetic or that like certain types of people aren't for us or like certain types of people wouldn't like us. And so we end up like judging who would want us and who wouldn't and who we would want and whatever based on their clothing and aesthetics and, and superficial stuff, which is important to do on some level, like. I would never date somebody long term that I'm not attracted to or whose aesthetic didn't didn't spark excitement in me. Like I lo I'm obviously into fashion and clothes and so it's like I like I like aesthetics. I like the way people look. I like people that are creative with their clothing and have a style and, and all that sort of shit. That's that's what turns me on. But with that said, the most satisfying relationship I've ever been in to date and the most in love I've ever been was with someone who I probably would not have matched with because I probably would have swiped left on him because she didn't, she didn't look like what I thought I wanted, you know, like when it comes to like girls on Instagram that I look like, or that I look at, I didn't look at girls like her. She just looked like a normal ass chick. And generally I'm not attracted to like normal ass chicks. So a thing about dating apps is we can lean into our biases a little too much and not have the beauty of being surprised by someone that you can get out in, in the open because this or out in public, because this, this woman that I started dating for four and a half years, um, I met her at a coffee shop. In fact, I've, I've met all the, the best sexual relationships I've ever had, the best romantic relationships I've ever had. They've all come from just me being out living my life and doing the things that I love to do and just being myself. I've only ever met two people from, uh, dating apps and I didn't end up really liking either one of them for very long. And that's not to say that they're bad or anything like that. They're, like I said, they're a lot of fun, but it's just they run us into a lot of potential problems. And the other problem that I want to talk about is it's easy for dating apps to make you feel less desirable than you are. Because a big, at least here in LA, it seems like almost every dating app or almost every profile, like, like maybe two to three out of five dating like tinder profiles that i'm that i'm looking at it's obviously just a bot trying to like get my information or it's obviously just an instagram model who just wants me to follow her on instagram or it's obviously all these other different things but even when you do get a match it's like nine times out of ten people don't talk they you know it's like they match and then they don't talk and then they they end up ghosting each other and they never talk again and so it's like you could if you're the type who uh finds it easy to make up stories about yourself you could easily make up stories as to why that is. You could say, I'm not desirable. There's nobody around that, you know, gets me. There's all these different things you could potentially tell yourself that 
when the fact of the matter is, is you're probably just dealing with a bunch of people that are on this because they have really bad social anxiety. And so when they get a match, they don't know what the fuck to do. Because that's the other thing is to consider is that we, for the most part, everybody has really bad social anxiety. Like it's very, very common. And so when you get on these apps, it's like you could be having a really great conversation with someone and then someone could get too excited about the fact that it was going well and they freak out and bail and you think it's because you said something wrong. There's like almost no way to know what the fuck the other person is saying because on these dating apps, people are generally, in my experience, really bad at communicating. So it can make it very easy for you to tell negative stories about yourself and get a negative view of yourself that isn't really deserved. Now, with that said... I've also noticed something uh, really interesting about dating apps is that I seem to get what I put out, right? This is going to be a little bit embarrassing, (laughs) you know, especially as like a life coach or whatever. But when I first down, when I first moved to LA, which was a year and a half ago, after being in long-term relationships for 10 straight years and not getting my needs met for like three to five of those years. I came down here and I was like, oh, I'm just going to fuck a bunch, you know, like I'm going to like start going to these like BDSM clubs and I'm just going to like find this like totally sex positive community. I'm just going to like fuck like crazy. And I did that for a little bit. I fulfilled some of my fantasies. I, I got to knock some things off my bucket list and that was really cool. But quickly, um, and a lot of some of that was from dating apps. Like I was getting all these, you know, matches left and right and like talking to people and blah, 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 blah. Um, And that was when I was really clear on what I wanted and I had no problem going to get it. And then I realized that that wasn't satisfying to me. So I set my sights on something more deeply satisfying and more deeply fulfilling. I was like, okay, you know, I'm still not ready for another committed relationship. I do still want to be having sex. um, But I want to be doing it with people that I can actually build relationships with. And I want to be doing it with people that um, I can be honest with and go deep with, but people that are like me and and aren't looking for a monogamous relationship, at least at this point in their life. And when I decided to set my sights on what I really wanted, all of my doubts and my fears and all these different things started coming up. Because it's like, there's a reason I didn't have my, at 32, there's a reason I didn't have my eyes set on the stuff I really wanted to begin with, because it was scary. And so I set my sights on the stuff that I really wanted. And it's because I was so afraid, this could potentially be, I don't know how it is as a woman, if you're a woman watching this, Um, this tends to be how it is for a guy, but it's like you get your confidence and your confidence is just fucking on point and you're just like getting attention left and right. But as soon as you become fearful and as soon as you become, actually, this has to be true for women as well, at least for a lot of people, I am generalizing, please forgive me. (laughs) Um, is that once your confidence starts to slip, then so do all of your engagements, right? You're not, you're, it's like, Women can smell desperation, it seems like, and women can, can smell uncertainty. And they, they know when you're not being confident. They know when you're like second guessing yourself and all that shit, and they just fucking head for the hills. Or at least it seems like it. If I'm wrong, please let me know. <laughs> it, at least if you don't think this way, then I, I apologize. But it seems to be how it is. And I don't know how this is. It's, it's very, seems to be pointing towards um, some kind of like new agey, law of attraction sort of thing. But when my confidence was down, it was like, I couldn't even find women on these apps that I was attracted to. And then when I did, I was like, Oh my God, I hope you match with me. Cause like, Oh my God, you're so rare. And like, Oh God, all these things, but it never happened. And even if I did, it was like, I wasn't very good at holding the conversation. So the whole reason that I'm bringing this up is to tie it onto what I said before of all the best relationships I've ever had and all the best sexual experiences I've ever had were from me being myself. So if you're the type of person where you get on Tinder because you're sad and you're lonely and you're looking for a dopamine hit, that's going to be disappointing because if you're doing it from that perspective, you likely wrote your little about me thing from a somewhat desperate perspective. And I'm saying this as someone who's done it. So I'm not making fun of you. I'm I'm saying this empathetically and compassionately because I know what it's like because I, I just spent eight months there. Um. And so you can be sitting there like kind of hoping that like you get your dopamine hit and blah, blah, blah. And even if you get it, you realize that your confidence kind of down and then you're afraid to talk to the person. And so the whole thing lets you go. And so the reason that I'm bringing this up is because uh, dating apps will mirror back to you your state of being. And so if you're having a negative experience of being a person in the dating world and and a person who's having a, a negative experience of trying to negotiate either romantic or sexual relationships, that's all that's going to be mirrored back from you. 
But if you take some time and work on yourself and be like, you know what, like, I know what I want. I know what I'm looking for. I trust that there's an abundance of it around me. Um, I've been doing that over the last week, and it's really bizarre to watch how I haven't moved. I haven't changed apps. I haven't done anything. But suddenly, there's just way more women that I'm attracted to. And suddenly, they seem to be matching with me more. So it's, so it's like a, a frequency thing where if you're in a downward spiral, all the app is going to do is increase your downward spiral. But if you are in an upward spiral, same thing. All it's going to do is increase it. So it's, it's a trap to fall into when you're expecting this app or the potential mates that you find on it to make you happy. That's not going to work well. You're going to have a bad time. So if you find yourself continually having a negative, negative experience with it, do some reflection work. See how you're feeling about yourself. See how you're feeling about sex. See how you're feeling about relationships. And do what you need to get in alignment with yourself and your desires and, and trust yourself to be able to find it. And then things will start to change. I'm willing to bet. Now, the other reason that I'm saying this is because the my experience is the best pl- way to meet people is to do what you want to do, be who you want to be, go where you want to go with the people that you want to be there with. Because that's you with your most attractive. When you're doing what you want and you're being who you are, regardless of what anyone else thinks, there's just nothing sexier than that. Everyone says confidence is sexy where it's like people like this is a really cool thing where people seem to think that like people only like skinny people or whatever. But with me personally, if you get me like a super skinny person or whatever, and but they don't look genuinely happy, they're just not going to be as attractive to me as like a plus size woman who's like obviously feeling herself. Like that is so hot to me. Confidence is so much sexier. And so when you're doing what you want to do and you're living the way you want to live, and you're being yourself, you're just you're just being as hot as you can possibly be. And then if you're going into environments where other people are doing the things that you want to do, then you're going to be the best version of yourself around other people that are being the best version of themselves, and you also happen to have a thing in common. And my experience is that generally tends to work out pretty well. And even if the people don't have things in common with you, then it's like you're still being your best self. You're still showing the best version of yourself to somebody. And this is actually how I fell in love with the last girlfriend that I had. I used to have a business throwing parties at nightclubs and I was off there like doing work and I was on fire because I was excited about this new thing that I was doing and because I was so hyped I ended up striking a conversation with the girl at the at behind the cash register and we dated for five years so in summary I I know I talked a lot and it was rambling so I hope this was (laughs) beneficial to somebody but um in closing dating apps are cool they're a really cool social experiment to see what types of things you can get back depending on what types of things you're putting out but it's best to hold it as an experiment not as something that you know is that you're trusting to deliver your mate to you i wouldn't do it that i wouldn't hold it that way because that's that seems like i'm setting myself up for disappointment and i'm also cutting myself off from the mystery and surprise of like meeting somebody out on the street who I didn't expect to be attracted to or I didn't have it or I didn't expect to have such chemistry with. Like I love the mystery and I love I love all that sort of different stuff. And then also the number one thing if you're dating in general is to be happy with yourself. Cuz people can smell your desperation. People can smell the, the all that shit from a mile away and it's it's not really attractive. However, it is attractive to the wrong people. The people that are going to like smell your desperation and be like, oh yeah, I want that. Probably don't want those people. So no matter whether you're using dating apps or going to bars or whatever it is, get right with yourself first. That is absolutely mandatory. Because if you don't and you get into a relationship before getting right with yourself, you can bet that that's not going to go well. Because when you finally have enough and you do start to get right with yourself, the right version of you will likely not be aligned with the relationship that you got into and you'll have to fucking end the thing anyway. So you might as well just get right with yourself first. It'll be more satisfying. You'll be able to take the rejection better because rejection is a natural part of dating and all these different things. So be you, do you, be 100%. Dating apps are a great social experiment, but they're not necessarily indicative of real life. Real life is much more satisfying. And in my personal opinion, the best ways to meet people that are really going to satisfy you is to go to places that are satisfying to you and be someone you're satisfied being with people that you like being around. That's that's just going to, Just increase the chances like a motherfucker. So let me know if you have any questions about this. Um, I love you. And uh, I'll see you next time.